All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Friday, February 10th, 2023. If you've not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, let's get into the markets here. So uh, basically a flat session right now. Spiders are trying to uptick a little bit here uh, into the final half hour to close out the week. Um, the big story for me here today is this market has changed character. Um, and what I mean by that is, so look at the triple Qs here, down 91 basis points versus the flat spiders. Um, Dow leading to the upside. So the Dow is the best performing index. And we're seeing laggard shift from the semis, as well as, and there's a the semis daily, um, as well as cloud software down 1.6%. At the same time, dollar index uh, dip is being bought. Um, so we talked about that test candle yesterday and it's still flagging bullish right beneath that 50 moving average. Beneath this trend line, it is coiling for a move up here. Also bonds, uh, two year continuing lower today. So down two basis points there. 30 year down 81 basis points. 10 year down 35, bonds getting rocked. Also energy, XLE up almost 4%, crude up two and a quarter, even Natty up 5% now. So what does all this have to do with anything? Well, the, really for the last week or so, actually the last month, really since December, the queues have been leading the market by far. And um, that's something we talked about in December. So the queues will be the most, the better performing one in January. And they have been, but and even up to really earlier this week, when we had that Powell talk, um, the queues were still outperforming. The last two days, they really have not, though. Um, and by the way, we closed below that Powell pump bar uh, yesterday, um, <clears throat> which is a little significant because it reminds me of December, which we talked about yesterday. But anyways, the inflation trade is starting to creep back in. I mean, this is exactly the way the market traded all last year. Um, tech down, energy up. Bonds down, dollar up, and really that's kind of what we're seeing here right now. Um, so this is a little bit of a changing character here. Now it's still one day here. We don't have heavy volume, and we do we do have uh, on the spiders here. You could still make a case that you know this is an up move. You're pulling back into the 20 moving average. You're into that green bar, so we can still get a bid off of that. There's nothing. I'm not saying we can't you know bid up off of this. But we're starting to see a few cracks here in the armor, specifically the semiconductor is now starting to underperform. I never like it when that happens. Now, technically, technically speaking, they haven't really done any real technical damage. Um, so you still have, you know, this green bar here. You're above the 20. You're above all the moving averages. It's still hanging in there. OK, but to see it underperform like that um, is a concern, especially when I see everything. If it was just if it was just the semiconductors down, I wouldn't really care. It'd be you know everything else. You know it would be just one thing. But when you have the bonds, the dollar, energy, it, it, this looks exactly like you know January, February, April, May, June of last year. This is that same type of inflation trade that's on. And why I think that's significant is for the same reason I've been trying to you know mention all week long is that. Everybody's saying, oh, inflation's a disinflation, disinflation, disinflation. It's going to come in soft landing. The two years saying we're going to have inflation on the, on the CPI. By the way, this morning, uh, Michigan consumer sentiment and U.S. December CPI was revised up. And we're that I mean, that was probably your trigger for that. But um, if you've been following the channel, you know, that was likely to happen anyway, because we, we've been covering the two year here, uh, which has been getting smoked. And that has been telling us. Um, that this market is under pressure here. You see, we broke that trend line, and ever since then, it's been very weak. So um, I, I don't be surprised if that inflation print comes in hotter than expected and we see some panic because of that. Um, either way, at this point, even if it comes in cold or, or ex as expected, I mean, I don't know what's left for the market to rally on. We already had earnings. Um, We've got, you know, we've got the FOMC out of the way. We've, you know, we would have CPI out of the way potentially. Um, this market just looks like it's on borrowed time here. And I think it's about done now. I think they could still, you know, if we do power pump up again, like we did in December and make a new nominal high, you do have that gap fill up there. Again, we did technically kind of flag into that 20 moving average. So again, nothing really wrong structurally. It's just the fact that we broke that 
I don't like when we lost that Powell pump because this is when everything was supposedly so dovish, right? Um, so if, if it is, then why did we close below that low? Um, and secondly, we broke that upsloping trend line. So that was going back to the sixth. So right in that area there, I think that was the trend line. It might've been something else. Maybe I'm looking at, I don't remember how I had to draw it in, but we broke the trend line. I think maybe it was right here. Yes, it was that upsloping wet rising wedge trend line. That's what it was. So, <laughs> excuse me. So we did lose that kind of angle here. Although it was very overbought and steep anyway. But again, that's really what I'm looking at here. Change of character in the market. Um, if this continues, <clears throat> especially into Monday, that means inflation trade is on. So to Monday, what you want to look for is if you're bullish, you want to see the cues outperform everything. Um, otherwise, could be telling us something here moving forward. But anyways, as far as the triple cues are concerned, Again, we filled that gap yesterday, a little doji here. This is actually not a terrible setup here for a pop. Um, I would have liked it if we had came back in and touched that 20 moving average on, on the spiders and the cues, um, just to give it a little bit more juice. But uh, for right now, nothing terribly broken with it. Um, so we'll see what we do Monday, and obviously all eyes will be on the CPI number. Don't be surprised if Monday's a quiet day as well, because um, obviously, like I just said, um, CPI at 8:30 Tuesday. We could just get a sideways day, or you know, maybe they maybe they get a relief bounce. I mean, this is not a ter uh, terrible technical pullback pattern here. Uh, the Dow again hanging in there, just continuing to struggle with that kind of wedge pattern there, um, but it's holding up okay. Again, 3:45 is still the upside target if we are to move up. IWM. Um, this is actually not a bad setup here. I actually did play this long for a quick scalp earlier today, um, but I told you that 188 level. That's basically right where we went, uh, right to that trend line, 188.53 was the low of the day, 20 MA, <clears throat> we pierced the 20 MA, and now we're green on the day again, volume pretty light here across the board, so we can still pump up off of this, I think the Russell is topped though, I don't think this makes a higher high, even if we do pump up next week, um, this looks really top heavy here, basically went parabolic up into a major resistance zone, um, and I mean major here on the IWM, so you know, could it challenge this red bar high at 195 if we pump? For sure. I mean, you know, there's also a gap right up here at, what's that, 196, 190, we'll call it 197 right there. Um, so, you know, maybe it could get up there, but I don't see it making a new high. And if it does, it'll be just nominal. All right. So we mentioned the semis here again, nothing terribly wrong here. You did lose this pivot, but it's not, you know, it's not a horror show. We did close. We are going to close below that power ball, power, Powell power bar. I guess we'll we'll call it that uh, from uh, Tuesday. So a little bit a little bit of a negative there, but again the pattern's fine. Um, Nvidia. Uh, one of my members pointed this out yesterday in the live stream. Beautiful short level there. Um, wish I had taken that myself. I didn't even really wasn't even really looking at it yesterday. They have earnings coming up in a few weeks though. But beautiful level, fifty percent retrace, gap fill. There's your bear flag. Way and I mean way overbought here. I mean you're up you know, 100% just from where, what's the, we went up to 230. Yeah, so 110. Yeah, 100% from the lows there. So either way, um, yeah, really nice pullback there for NVIDIA. Um, remember, they do have earnings in a week or two, so just bear that in mind. Um, IGV here, again, down just like the rest of tech, still holding this green bar. So cloud's actually holding up relatively well, a lot better here. Um, if there's something that's going to make a new high, maybe it's this here um, because it's definitely held that bullish structure a little bit better. It's holding that green bar from Tuesday, although it did test the low. So again, nothing really terrible with the pattern here. Um, but again, I think these are all on borrow time. Either way, you slice it or dice it. So anyways, Dow Transports um, tried to rally in the we got a gap down and tried to rally back here now kind of rolling over just a little bit here as we get into the final hour so transport's starting to show a little bit of weakness uh, as we get into the afternoon session here the jets are under a little bit of pressure holding that uh that pivot right there but looks like a fake breakout there possibly for jets first support will be 19 dollars there um but transports you know they're hanging in there i don't like that we lost that green bar um this probably wants to get back to that 20 you'll have that pivot high right there so around 14 8 but again everything's going to depend on the cpi anyway um, but that is the level there on the downside or at least the first level to watch on the downside for djt all right so we kind of mentioned interest rates already but there's a 10-year um 
So up 61 cents there on the TNX, TYX here up 83 cents. Back above all four major moving averages. The trend is now back up. Um, look at the weekly. This looks strong. So um, if this can get back above that 20, you'll have reclaimed the full uptrend on the TYX as well. So these are not good signs here for really anybody, <laughs> not just stocks, but really for anybody here. Um, yeah, definitely got to keep an eye on that. All right, uh, XHB. So that did uh, dip down a little bit today. This one really failed to recover. So down 51 basis points currently. And again, unlike the market, it wasn't able to really recover there. You see the Russell. This has been kind of under pressure for the rest of the day. I think these have topped out here, all of the home builders. Um, they are really top heavy here. And I think that was a blow off move. But still, you know, again, they could still get a bid here. Again, like everything else, they're kind of coming into that 20 MA. So I wouldn't rule out one more pop here. But I don't think they make new highs. VNQ. Um, back below this trend line here um, and below the 200 moving average, you know, maybe they can pop it up in the last 15 minutes and close this above that. We held the 20, um, you know, that's about it here. But again, looks like kind of a fake out here, very much like the Jets did uh, last week. So that little outside pop and then no follow through. So bulls might be trapped in, the, in, in some of these equities here um, if they were chasing the highs. All right, over to the financials. So um, it's probably a crime that I never mentioned Credit Suisse yesterday. Um, but, you know, now it looks like there's a run on uh, Credit Suisse. Uh, Zero Hedge did an article on that. So massive outflows. You can see the volume here, big selling. They might have done a liquidity swap yesterday. As you can see, it's up 4% today. So just getting that random gap up, it looks like they did another liquidity swap. But this thing's going to have to do a reverse split soon because uh, to comply with the exchange rules, um, this is a $3 stock. It's got to get above 5 So they're going to have to reverse split. Um, but this is just barely holding double bottom right now. And again, what did I say months ago? And, and yesterday, I kind of, re, kind of recapped this. Look at the KRE, the KBE, the XLF. All of them broke down before everything else. Financials are uh, definitely some alarm bells sounding here. The, you know, the XLF is holding up today. It's getting up, you know, 80, uh, it's up 32 basis points right now um, inside of yesterday's reversal bar. But again, this has failed to rally with the market. So that's really the bottom line. And uh, we'll continue to watch this. Moving forward, broker dealers still holding up. You know, they're hanging in there really well. Um, again, like they sell volatility. So that is a good, certainly the last year has been good for volatility. So I, that's my suspicion as why the XBD has held up so well relative to everything else. Uh, crude, so we mentioned that a little bit, up two and a quarter on the day. And um it's not a breakout yet, and we still got some work to do, as you guys are probably aware um, if you've been following the channel. But that um, the red bar high there, 82.76, or 82.72, sorry, that's the level that we need to break on a weekly close. But this is basically, though, um, it's off by a few pennies, but it's, oh, okay, well, 50 cents. Um, but this is basically an engulfing reversal on the weekly. And we've had a few of those, right? So, you know, big down move, down move, engulfing, down move, big, big wide range candles here. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen with this. I mean, I'm still giving it a downside bias until proven otherwise. But if the theory is correct that the inflation trades back, this will probably take off. Um, so we'll watch very closely what this does next week. But that is still the resistance until proven otherwise. Obviously, if we break the lows, um, 65 will be a speed bump, I think, on the weekly. And then really 60 bucks is like your rock salad. But I would love to buy it down there, but um, I don't even know if it gets there at this point. XLE, so up 4% as we talked about rec reclaiming trend. And again, looks like the inflation trade is back on here. So and this is starting to bid up here into the end of the day. Um, just really strong. Take a look at the intraday, just a chug higher. And it really looks like how the SPY looked yesterday, except to the inverse, right? Just straight down. Um, again, this is how these things were trading all last year when the inflation trade was on. So this is why I'm saying this XOP, 5%. And we're going to get back above this kind of pivot high here on a weekly close, back above the 50 MA on a weekly close. You know, nothing crazy just yet, not a breakout, but showing strength here, OIH above yesterday's break, you know, not breakdown, but red candle high. So holding up well, Nat gas, finally getting a bid up 5%. We haven't made a new low here and it looks like the liquidations, and by the way, take a look at the volume on the weekly, last two weeks, buyers are stepping in. Um, and these liquidations into the end of the day, into the COMEX close, 
um, they're being bought up in the after hours. So whoever is whoever is liquidating because they were over leveraged up here, um, it looks like they're about done. So um, Nat gas, once this gets going, this 20 MA is minor. This is almost meaningless at this point. Um, but, you know, 315 or so, 310, that'll be a little bit of resistance. And then 350, four bucks is the big level there. But this thing, once it gets going, it's going to, I mean, I was just telling my members, it's very much like Tesla. And you guys remember me banging the drum to buy Tesla um, last or really in December. Very much very similar, that kind of down move and then another huge wave down, oversold, a little bit of a rolling bottom and then consolidation and then bam. So I think it's going to be very similar. Um, Nat gas will be to Tesla, but yeah, very significant here, up 5%. Um, I wouldn't make anything out of it if it wasn't for everything else. So like I said, bonds, tech down, crude, um, definitely some change in character here. Dollar index, up move, still flagging. So I like that for a move up next week. Maybe the CPI is the catalyst, um, but that looks very good to me. Gold here held a 50 moving average, but not a really good bounce, right? So just a little doji, um, nothing major. Maybe it wants to go up and retrace up to this area next week, um, but I do not like gold up here. And again, the miners are kind of leading that, right? So the miners, you know, GDX made a lower high on the first and gold made a higher high. So again, that's signaling that smart money is getting out of this. And uh, those are things you got to look at. Um, if you want to be good in this market, but uh, silver here down 42 basis points here, although it's got a green candle for the uh, Globex open. Um, again, it's holding that 100 MA. I'm not in love with it here. Again, you guys know my stance on it. I still think it has to go lower, but it could get a bounce. Um, 23 and, you know, 23.30 or so would be pretty good areas of resistance on the daily time frame. Platinum all the way down to 950. If you're aggressive, you could probably take this here. Um, I would wait for a pierce of the 200 though. So let's take a fib here. Probably get right down. Yeah, you're right into that 50% fib. 200, this is okay. Yeah, I would say this is probably okay. And on the weekly, into the weekly 200 as well. Um, for a quick trade, you could probably get back up to, you know, 985, maybe 1,000 even. Um, but on my level on platinum is a little bit lower for a swing trade. But um, nice little pullback there. For PL futures, copper also under pressure today. Still, kind of, still has kind of a, a bear wedge here on the daily. Didn't quite break down yet. I don't think it's quite ready. Um, but that is, you know, that looks to be under pressure here moving forward. Um, okay, lastly, Bitcoin. Not a whole lot to talk about. But, you know, just kind of looks like everything else, right? We had an outside day yesterday and then just kind of a flattish to lower day uh, here. That's basically what the rest of the market is doing. Again, I'm looking for this to test 21,000, somewhere in that range. Um, I think I said yesterday I'd have a speed bump at 20, 21.5. Below the day was 21.533. Um, so it's just kind of pausing right there. If this trades up, 23,000 is resistance. Um, but for right now, 21,000 is the level that it wants to test. All right, lastly, let's get back over to the spiders here. 3.51 p.m. Market's getting a little bit more of a, oh, now we're coming back in a little bit. So bear's kind of holding this 408 area. We probably get a 408 pin for OPEX, for uh, weekly OPEX here. So it wouldn't surprise me if we just close sideways. It's the end of the day anyway, and it is a Friday. So I hope all you guys um, have a good weekend. You guys take care. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com. I'll talk to you guys all next week.